thanks for joining me. Uh, we're in woods over there, well, we're fishing actually. Um, it's it's quite an old wood and we've got a lot of birch in there. And it's coming to this time of year, isn't it? Autumn or fall across the pond there. Um, where the birch tree starts producing, uh, well, not the birch itself, but the fungus inside the birch tree starts producing its fruit, the polypore. Like so. So I saw one of these, I thought, that's a nice one. I'll get it before insects and bugs get into it. Some had said a nibble at it there, but it's nothing. Uh, if it's, these are just spot on, still a bit moist, a bit damp, a bit squishy, but a perfect example. Now, if you leave them too long and you get all the bugs and crap in them, they just eat them and it, there's nothing left. They turn black, all the goodness is gone. Uh, so this is the ideal time to get them and don't sort of be greedy and take them all off one tree. I mean, that will make me loads of tea. Uh, it's renowned for its, if you don't know about polypore, it's renowned for its medicinal purposes, uh, antiseptic, antibiotic, everything's in there. It's it's a whole lot of goodness the birch tree provides again. And obviously in the, summer, in the springtime, you can actually tap the birch tree <clears throat> and get the sap. It's like a bit like, they do it like maple syrup, don't they? They put a tap in it in a tube. But that's it, that's another story, isn't it? But at this time of year, the polypore, the fruit of the, uh, the actual fungus that's inside the tree. It's like a fifth level fungus apparently, because obviously the fungus live in the ground and the fruits, the mushrooms, etc., are coming out on the ground, dead trees, fallen trees, and then higher up on the trees as well. So this is normally found quite high up. Anything from like three to four foot above, and you get some quite good ones at this time of year. Uh, so we'll have a look more in detail at it. Well, there you go, the birch polypore. I can't remember the Latin name. It's not important as long as you know what it is. But be sure yourself before you use one that you have got the right thing. Do your research, check it. I know 100% this is what I've got is a birch polypore. But please do your own research before you don't take my advice. Do your own research, okay? Disclaimer, umbrella. <laughs> See you in a bit. Right. So this thing, the birch polypore, is obviously found on the birch tree. And it normally it comes at this angle. Imagine my arm's the tree. You see it sticking out the tree like that. I think some people call them turkey tails because of the way they look. <laughs> yeah? Um, obviously the thousands, they go back thousands of years. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the documentary, Oxy the Ice Man, it was 3,000 year, well, 3,400 BC. And uh, they found him perfectly mummified, I think it was near Austria, Italy, that sort of way. Totally frozen in ice and it mummified him. And they found tools on him and all sorts, fire lighting and stuff, you know, flint and steel. He got basic tools. Um, he got an arrowhead in his back. <laughs> It was even that well preserved uh, on doing an autopsy sort of thing on him. They found he'd actually got a, a worm inside him as well. Uh, but they found, I think he had a leather thong around his neck with a slice of this polypore actually on it. So, you know, 3,400 years BC, guys were running around using this stuff. So, and the Chinese regard this as a really good herbal medicine um, but like I said before be careful what you're picking be 100% sure you know what you're getting yeah now the uses for this thing you can slice it and boil it and use it as a, a brew a tea it can also be used as a small plaster or a dressing because it's got antiseptic in it and everything else but obviously I'll show you how to make the plaster in a minute but you may have to use like some micropore tape or something else just to tape it onto the wound. And apparently I've not seen it before, but when it's applied to a wound, it hardly leaves any trait, you know, it's like cut on your finger, it leaves no scarring and nothing, but that, I don't know. But it is good. Um, so like this one, it's not completely dried. And like I said, you can use it for tea, making a plaster and even a knife strop. Now you need it really dry to use it as a knife strop. And it, it, when it's dry, it becomes like a leather type surface. So, I mean, it, it'll not make a dull blade sharp, but it will help maintain a knife. And I think that's maybe why Oxy had it round his neck 
to keep his his tool sharp his cutting tool sharp maybe now the way to cut it simply slice it and you see it's quite a lovely white meat inside it look at that you can see where that insect's had a go at it but it's not quite buried in it just buried in so far and bogged off <laughs> so this one's not too bad but if you see them riddled don't bother just bin them or don't even pick it so in strips like that and then just half it you get what I'm saying and then obviously put it in a pan and boil it which I'll show you in a bit lovely meat isn't it the birch tree keeps on giving fantastic now to do a plaster this might be too uh, soft we'll find out in a minute make a linear cut to score it do another linear cut parallel to it depending on the thickness of your wound but mainly it's just put little cuts on your fingers and it'll stop you getting infected if you're out in the woods and you've got no plasters then join the two parallel lines together and you can see what I'm doing, I'm making like a plaster shape then you have to just get your knife under it work it under just score it again because it is quite soft it's not quite dried this one then we'll try and coax it up we're having some sort of success here there we go you can see you can see what I'm doing oh blow that a little bit off but if you applied that little piece, so you've got to cut on your finger, yeah. And then obviously you'd have to put micropore around that. But you place that directly over the wound, yeah. And then put some micropore tape around it, or whatever tape you can get around it, piece of cloth, whatever you've got available. And that it's not going to stop bleeding as such, but it will prevent infection in a cut, in a small cut in your finger in, in the woods. Or wherever you are fishing even maybe <laughs> it's just an handy little thing in it to know so I could get two or three plasters out of just one strip can you see can you see what I'm talking about there yeah okay but what I'll do now I'll slice about another four or five chunks of it up and I'll make a brew I'll boil it down and make a brew and I'll keep the other half and use it as a knife strop later on when it's dried out so I'll bring you back when I'm boiling my tea and I'm gonna save this bit to dry out right bring you back when things are boiling yeah, it's been boiling away for about 15 minutes now and it's I wish I had smell of vision it's got that mushroom smell it, 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 guys who like mushrooms you'll know what I'm talking about uh, if you just sniff that mmm uh, mushroom soup it's got that smell oh I'm steaming up my camera <laughs> right catch you in a bit right so I'm gonna strain it now it's done Well, the only thing to do now is to taste it. Well, it's hot. And the rest, I'll let it cool down and have it later. It can be a bit bitter. So if you want to put sweeteners or sugar in it, that's fine. But, uh, good health. Cheers, Mr. Birch Tree. And the polypore fungus. Thanks for watching. Cheers. <laughs>